Uh, re-gifting, man, that's not a popular thing. They're kind of ripping it apart, but uh, we're going to learn tonight that re-gifting is actually a good thing, all right? So I want to uh, just start off by saying uh, an early Merry Christmas to you all. It's good to see you all here. Thank you for making a wonderful, intelligent choice of your will to come and worship God tonight. That was a good choice. Amen. A lot of things you could have done, but you came to God's house uh, to worship Him. So uh, kudos to you. <clears throat> Last week, we uh, took a break from our series in the Gospel of Luke, where we're uh, just spending about a year going through the Gospel so we could know who Jesus is. He wants to build His church. That's what He's going to do. And He wants us to partner with Him to see that happen. And so <clears throat> what, he's got, what He wants to do is He wants to fill you up with some truth so you can worship Him in spirit, right? So that's what we've been doing. We've been taking a couple of months now, <clears throat> probably go a whole year, and we're going to just go through the Gospel of Luke to find out who Jesus really is, what He really taught, what He's doing right now, and what He will do so you can worship Him correctly. And when we worship Him, He builds His church, and the gates of hell will not prevail. I want to be part of that. Anyone else want to be part of that? I'm all in on that. I'm all in on that, okay? And I believe that when you say you are, you really want to. Uh, and so we, we, that's what we've been doing. But we took a, a hiatus from the Gospel of Luke. Um, but certainly, like I said last week, certainly no hiatus from the pursuit of truth. Even though we're going to be preaching a little bit about Christmas for a few weeks, uh, we're not going to veer from uh, finding the truth so that we could worship Him and worship Him well. And so uh, we, we started last week by... Uh, uh, Mentioning this verse, and I just want to mention it again, it's James 1.17, and that just clearly says that every good and perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father. We, we talked last week about <clears throat> that, 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 that truck that I saw at, at Walmart on, on Black Thursday now, right? It's just, it's spreading, and so like a cancer and, and, and it's bad, right? And, 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 and Black Friday is now Black Thursday, and I, I think it's going to end up being like, like Black November before we know it, right? It's like the Z starts playing Christmas songs like on July 4th, I think, now. It drives me insane. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, so there's this truck there at the gas station filled with these massive TVs. They're like the size of these things, and those are some good gifts, right? I like good gifts. You guys like good gifts? All right, I'm just saying. I like good gifts. Just saying I like good gifts. All right, good night. <laughs> so, but I like to give good gifts too. I, I really do. And, and some of the gifts that we give are good, right? That guy, if, if he was getting those for somebody, that, somebody's getting hooked up pretty large, right? Pretty large if you're from Boston. They're, they're, they're large screen TVs. They're wicked large. Wicked large. And, and so those would be good gifts, but... but, but but the, the, here's the thing, that the, the Bible tells us that if us sinful people, and, and that's not just to be mean to call you that you're rotten, but those are, a, let's just say, those are of you that are flawed, who make mistakes, you're not perfect, not, no one is. Like, and so if the, if the non-perfect guy can give a nice 72-inch television, flat screen to someone, that's a, that's a good gift. And there's nothing wrong with that gift, but, but in comparison, I think this is what it really means. In comparison to the amazing gift that your perfect father can give you, the TV just doesn't really mean much. It's a nice TV, right? But compared to some of the gifts that God gives, these are good, and these are good. These are real good. These are life, like eternally lasting, life impacting gifts. And we went over some of those gifts, these, these things that are willfully given to you without expectation of payment. These are not things you have to buy. They're not things that you deserve. They're not things that you, uh, that you are entitled to or that you earned in some way. No, God's just nice, right? He's just super nice. Look at your neighbor and say, God's nice. He is nice. I think it makes him smile when you say that. So, so, so that's good. But he's nice. He likes to give good gifts. And we, we, we went over a bunch of them last week. Just kind of a, just a quick uh, wrap up here of last week just to go over those things, a review for those of you that um, unfortunately couldn't be here. We talked about some of the gifts that God gives during this giving season. We talked about wealth and health and, and enjoying your work and your lot in life like self-made people. They don't fly high in front of God. 
They just don't mean a whole lot in front of God because they don't realize that anything that they have is really a gift from God. You know, no one can beat their own chest and go, look what I did. You did nothing, okay? The only reason why you breathe is because God lets you, all right? So, and, and, your, and your health, you know, and I mentioned this last week, uh, I think it was Nick uh, here earlier, he said that beginning of the year, you're going to start your new organic diet. I wished him luck with that one. All right? Have fun. Enjoy it. I'm going to eat a cheeseburger. Rare. Okay? God gave me taste buds. I'm going to use mine. Right? <clears throat> because the whole thing is, is that you can, you can, listen, I think that's great if you want to do it. I'm not ripping you. If you want to eat organic food, go for it. You want to run on the treadmill till your feet fall off, go for it. I'm just not going to do that, right? I, I, I know, I mentioned this last week, there's, there's old 90-year-olds that have been sucking down cowboy killers two packs a day for 90 years, right? And, and they're still hanging in there. And what I mean by that is that it's up to God when you check out, right? It's not up to you. So we could do what we want to do, but at the end of the day, it's, it's all about the Lord. It's his gift of life. And this whole idea of lot in life is just a summary term to say that, that the health that you have and the, and the name that you have, and the face that you have, and the body that you have, and the car that you drive, and the house that you live in, and the money in the bank, and the influence you have on anyone, anything that you have, that's your lot in life. That's what you got. And all of it is a gift from God. It's from Him. We learned that forgiveness and righteousness and being made right with God is also a gift from God. You, you, you were pardoned. Everyone admitted here last week, and you can admit it this week if you want. Have you ever sinned? So, so is it when he, when he went to the cross, did it make your sin like turn back time and it never happened? No, you still did it, right? So it's not something that you did. It's something that he did. He pardoned you. He pardoned you. So, it's, so that's a gift that you didn't deserve. And, and his righteousness, no one's perfect. You all admit that you sinned. So that means right out of the gate, you're not perfect. But when he looks at you, he sees Jesus because Jesus takes his perfection and he gives it to you and you give him death and garbage. So God looks at you and he sees his son. That's awesome. That's not something you did. That's something that Jesus Christ did. And, and as a matter of fact, because of that, now you're made right with him. You're salvation and your eternal life. That's a gift from God. You didn't deserve it. You didn't earn it. You're not entitled to it. You don't deserve nothing. But God gives it anyway. Your salvation was given to you as a gift from God. It's not a gift because you did something to deserve it. So no one can boast, the Bible says. It's nothing that you did to earn it. Now, now that might fly in the face of this American feeling of look what I've done. But that's really good news, everybody. That's really good news that you don't have to do anything. Can you imagine if you just went up to Harvard, just went to the admissions office and said, I'd like to sign up. And they said, oh, great, here's your master's degree. That would rock, right? That's exactly what Jesus does for you. You don't have to go to class to learn, to try to get somewhere. No, he saves you. Then you can go for your degree and start to learn and grow in him. It's a reverse economy that you're involved in here in the kingdom of God. It's awesome. We learned last week that serving, that was a big one. Serving is a gift from God. The church leaders don't need to be begging people to serve because serving is a gift from God. Paul said that it is by the grace of God that I've been given the gift of serving him, of serving the gospel. That's what Paul said, the gift of serving. And so I was really enthusiastic about this, and I, I'll tell you why. I enjoy, <clears throat> I've been doing this for a long time. Some weeks I walk out of here, and I'm like, man, it was a total disaster. Some weeks, awesome. The last two weeks in this church, I just have to tell you, I love God, and I love you. I have had so much fun from this pulpit. I have loved being here. It has been so awesome. Last week after we got done, we, you know, we meet on Sunday mornings, too, just to let you know. And I, and I just want to throw a side note. We will be here Christmas morning. Meredith and I will be here Christmas morning. It's on Sunday. If any of you want to just come and worship God, you can come. And we'll be here at 10 o'clock. It may just be her and I, but we will be here. We will be here. But anyway, when we got done with both services last weekend, I had two people come up to me. One person came up to me and said, I just want to let you know that I'm going to be here next week at 5 o'clock. Just give me a job. I just want to serve. Another person, he is here, and, and he said, uh, I can throw a sign. I'll stand up there and throw a sign. That's awesome, right? He, he just understands that it's a gift to serve. It's not, it's, no, it's not about begging someone to go do something that God has given you a gift to do. Let me tell, I, wanna ref, I just want to enhance the, 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 the idea here. It's a privilege 
It's a privilege. Me standing up here is not a burden. This is, this is the greatest privilege of my life that I could actually stand here and do this. Like, I can't believe that I get to do this. It's not a burden. It's a privilege. If those things are not enough, you get the gift of the Holy Spirit. The third person of the Trinity takes up residence inside of you at the moment of your conversion. The moment you bent your knee to Jesus Christ, his Holy Spirit was given to you. And all of these gifts that I've just mentioned to you have lasting value, eternal value. They'll never leave you. These are gifts that are not going to end up in your garage sale six months from now or in the toy box in the garage with the kids. How many Cabbage Patch dolls are you still playing with? How many Teddy Ruxpins are you still playing with? How many P PlayStation 1 are you still playing with? How many Genesis systems are you still playing with? Who, who's going home and can't wait to go play their Atari? These are all gifts that we, I need these things so bad. Where are they even at now? They're gone. But his forgiveness is forever. Awesome, right? These are incredible gifts. Incredible gifts. So I'd like to, uh, I'd like to just... Uh, start the evening off by giving you another gift. And these are not gifts that I'm trying to like figure out what it really kind of says or, or I need to pull out a commentary or, or a different translation or anything like that. No, these are, these are things that, that specifically say in Scripture that this thing is a gift from God, okay? So I want to give you one more uh, gift to kind of frame our evening tonight as we preach uh, this message called regifting, right? It's regifting. I want you to turn your attention to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Please go there. Grab a copy of God's Word. Don't just listen to what I have to say. There, there are evil men in this world that will steer you wrong. And don't take a chance with me. I used to sell cars for a living, yo. Okay? Get your eyes on God's Word. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. One of, it's a mountaintop in Scripture, one of my favorite verses in, in all of God's Word. Are you paying attention? Do you have a copy of God's Word in your hand? What's the greatest gift that God has ever left His people? Right? Why would you come to church and not put God's Word in your hand, right? Why would you? That's a waste of time to me. Why would you not? Listen, if anyone belongs to Christ... They're a new creation. Or, or some translations would say they're a new person. The old has died. Behold the new. A new life has begun. Listen, when, when, when those words are proclaimed over you, that, do you hear the chains drop off? Some people may be addicted to something in their past. Some people may be guilty of a, of a sin in the past, and they can't shake that. That's part of their identity. Well, this tells you that if you embrace Christ as Lord and Savior, that that, that identity needs to, it just dies. You're no longer that person. You're not identified by your past failures or your addictions. It's not who you are. If you, if you belong to Christ, then you're, you're free from sin and you're free from law and you're free from hell. You're a new person in Christ, right? So, so addictions and, and failures and divorces and, and fighting and crime and all these things that you did, if you come to Christ with a humble heart and say, Jesus Christ, save me, you now belong to him and that old failure doesn't identify who you are anymore. Amen, okay? Amen. So listen, it says, if you have become a new creation, this too is a gift from God. Does it say that? You're reading it, right? It's not a gift from, from Santa Claus. It's a gift from God, right? If you're a new creation, if you, if you belong to Christ, man, that's freedom, man. Isn't it? I, mean, I don't know about you, but I just read that. And I'm like, man, thank you. God, I don't have to make decisions anymore. I am such a failure. I barely graduated high school. I never amounted to nothing. And now I don't have to worry about it anymore. Because I don't have to worry about what, what's the right thing. What should I do? Jesus, what do you think I should do? You know everything. And let me just hear from you. You tell me what to do. That's so liberating to not have the pressure of your life on you anymore. You don't have to make decisions on your own anymore. You got the one who spoke and the planets came out of his mouth making decisions and you just need to tune in and listen. That's it. And he'll tell you what you should and shouldn't do. All of this is a gift from God. You guys get that? Okay. 
I want you to be bold. I want to be a part of a bold church, okay? I don't want you to be ashamed. If it embarrasses someone, I apologize. If you're a new creation in Christ, if you've bent the knee to Jesus and said, you know what, I don't want to be in charge anymore. I want you to be in charge. Just raise your hand up to the sky. That's awesome. Awesome. I love this. Two hands. Awesome. That's incredible, right? So we're all embracing that. You got a gift. But listen, you got to get 6-1. If you don't get 6-1, that's 5-17. If you don't get 6-1, all that's nothing. Just look at just a couple of verses down and look what it says in 6-1. As God's partners or as we work together. Okay, so church is talking to us, right? We're in this together. You've received it, right? New life. We beg you not to accept this marvelous gift of God's kindness. Yeah, it was. And then ignore it. That's a big one. We, we, I, can, I can just sense in Paul this pleading with people. Don't accept the gift of the salvation and then ignore it. See, this is what happens most of the time. Woo! Right? Awesome! I got the gift. I'm not going to hell anymore. That's awesome. I'm saved. I got baptized. I'm not going to hell. Jesus is my Lord and Savior. And, and I get a, I'm going to be in heaven someday. Is that awesome news? That is awesome news. But hold on a second. What did it say? It said the old has died. You got a new life. Why are we so focused on what's going to happen when you take your last breath? He said, your new life. The old one has died. This whole fact that you were under the, the power of sin and law and death and hell, that's all gone. Why are we even thinking about that anymore? You've been given a new life. Let's start focusing on that. So that's the promise. See, most people get this and they're like, oh, this is awesome news. I love it. Jesus is, God is good. God is good. So I'm just going to kind of, keep this back here. I'm good. They don't realize that they have actually a new life. So we have to live on truth. Do you ever, well, I don't feel like a new person. Well, I, you know, you, and you do something ugly and you're like, well, that's just who I am. Okay, that's a lie from hell. That's not who you are. Your old habits and your old inclinations, what is the, okay, what does the Bible say? Not what you feel. I, I was sharing with Dan the other day. John MacArthur stood up in a church and he was preaching and a person, he, he, he asked a question and he said, he, he's, he's expositing on these on this verses and the, and the guy stands up and says, Dr. MacArthur, um, I'm just curious about this one verse. I feel as if, and, he, and Dr. MacArthur goes, well, hold on, hold on, hold on right there. Okay. It doesn't matter what you feel. As a matter of fact, it doesn't even matter if you were ever born. What God's word says, it is. Okay, that's the truth. And we're gonna worship God and live the life that he's given us to live. Then we have to live our life based on the truth of God's word, not on how you feel. So if you don't feel like you're a new person, it doesn't matter. If you've embraced Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are a new person. The old one is dead. And so we don't want to keep going back into our old patterns and priorities and, and our perspective, and this is just what I did. No, we don't do that anymore. We're new. We're different. The old things are fading away, and here's the new stuff coming along. And every day, you should die a little. Die a little. Die a little. A little less of you and a little more of him. Empty me. Did you hear it? You sang it, right? <laughs> Empty me, Lord. Get rid of my old and ugly that I used to do. Forget the perspective that I used to have. Forget my old worldview. I want to live like you. I, wanna, I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. Less of me and more of you. That's what we're looking for. We don't, people shouldn't even wreck, other than the look on your face, they shouldn't even be able to know who you are. Who is this Dan Johnson guy? What happened to the old drunk I used to know in the bar? Where is he? He's dead. He's dead. Where's old Lori? She's dead. Dead. This is the new creation. That's what a Christian is. 
Someone completely different than they used to be. The old life dies. That's awesome. But the new life begins. That's incredible. And that's where our focus needs to be. All new motives, all new perspective, all new priorities, a whole new purpose in life. Listen, what did you... We go around the room, we could ask. Can we be... We're an open church, right? No, no hiding, nothing, right? That's what I like about you guys. No facade. Okay, so, so if someone asks you, like, what's your purpose in life? What would you tell them? What's your purpose in life? It's awesome. I'm looking for someone who's not so holy. <laughs> right? So if you ask someone who's not, I know Carl, he's been, he's a, been a studier of the scriptures for years, so I, can, I, I expect that of you. That's awesome. It's a good man. Right? But most people in our country wouldn't, if you went out there on the street side at Walmart and said, what's the purpose of your life? Glorify God? That's not going to be the answer. What is it? Well, I, you know, make a good living for my kids. Have a nice home. I mean, I don't know. What, what's your purpose? What was your purpose before you, you came to Christ? Before you realized that your sole purpose was to glorify him? What was it about? Making some money? being successful in the eyes of our culture. Everyone look at my house and look at my wife. She's a trophy. Look at my kids. They're perfect. Lie. Look what I got. Look what I've made. Look what I've built. Look at me. That's not our purpose in life. So here's the, here's the new purpose. He's repurposed you, <laughs> right? You've been repurposed. Colossians 1.16 says this, everything was created by him and for him, repurposed. See, the problem is that we were all made with that purpose to bring glory to God. Like that should be the reason why you live is so that Jesus Christ is known and famous and admired. That's it. That's what you're living for. And we got all these different things that are being stuffed into our schedule every single day. And how much time how much time is spent glorifying God? How, much, how many people around you are looking at your very life and just looking at you and going, because of what you did, I, be, I give praise to the Father. See, we read that in Scripture. That's one of the disturbing things to me is that what I read and what I see are so different, man. You know, this talks about in, in one of the letters to, to, to the Corinthians, he said that when you give like this, the people will give thanks to God. Just what you do gives glory to God, right? They won't give glory to you. They'll give glory to the God who inspired you to give when people don't give. Like, so I'm asking you, I'm just saying, look at your life and, and ask yourself, is, is what I'm doing, look at my schedule, look at my day planner, is what I'm doing accomplishing the purpose that God saved me for. You see? He's not just saved you from your old life and your old destiny, which was hell. He saved you to something. He saved you to a new purpose, to new priorities and new motives in what you do. Everything should be different. For him, that's the equipping that you've been given. That's the advice. That's, that's clear. It's two words. This is why you live. Okay, here's your purpose. For him. That's why. Th that's it. Real simple. For him. Now that you belong to Christ, you have a new purpose. You're under new management. That's what happened. You're under new management now. You're not living the same life that you were. You have a different reason for existence but what's that look like? All right, preacher, you just said I'm supposed to live for God, for him. Okay, I get it. And he's going to use me. That's great, to bring glory to him. And people are going to look at my life, and they're going to bring glory to God, and we're going we're to partner with him to grow his church, and the gates of hell will not prevail. That's awesome. Well, what does that look like? How is God going to use me to reach his world? I don't feel saved. I don't feel worthy. I don't feel able. Do you ever feel that way? <clears throat> Many of you know I used to be in the, in the golf business. And I thought back in the day that I was, these are my sticks. I haven't really played with them in a long time. But um, <clears throat> I used to think I was going to make it. 
<laughs> you can laugh. <clears throat> I used to think I was going to make it because I was, you know, I was all right. Maybe to, to the average American who can't bust 100, I was all right. You know, I'd shoot in the 80s, low 70s here and there. That's not bad. Okay, but then watch TV. I sucked, okay? <laughs> that's, just, that's just the way. I was no good. But I thought I was going to make it, and so I was playing all the time. I got out of that and, and uh, got into a different field in, in golf and the rules of golf and tournament golf and um, running the tournaments instead of uh, trying to play in them because I wasn't going to make it. It was quite obvious. Um, it's hard, man. Those guys are magicians, aren't they, out there? Incredible talent. <clears throat> I, I, I say that because I, I just, I wonder if you ever feel this way when it comes to, to God. You just, <laughs> I chose a one iron. You know why I chose a one iron? <laughs> you guys ever hear of Lee Trevino? You ever, anyone ever play golf here other than him? Anyone ever play golf? A couple times? A couple times? So you know that a one iron is like the most difficult club to hit, right? The less the loft, the harder it is to hit. And it's very, very difficult, right? And Lee Trevino said that in a thunderstorm, a lightning storm, he's going to hold up his one iron because he doesn't even think God could hit a one iron. <laughs> so, so I chose a one iron on purpose because what if I went up to you and I just said, hey, uh, here, Mike, go play on the tour. Best of luck to you. How's that going to work? <clears throat> you going to make it? Probably not. I don't know how to play. Do you even know how to play golf? I gave you a club. What's wrong with you, dude? You got all that you need. You're equipped. You're ready. You got the club. You need some balls. I probably have some in here too. You should be fine, right? I can't do that. I'm not ready. I'm not prepared. I'm not equipped for this new purpose. You want me to play golf on the PGA Tour? And I have no idea how to do it. I'm not ready for that. That's not the way God is, though. That's not the way God is at all. I want to give you some equipment right here to put into your golf bag so you can be ready to fulfill the purpose that God has saved you for. Not from, for. If you have been repurposed for his glory, you have to be able to do it, right? You need to be able to go out and do the work of the ministry to, to spread the kingdom of God, to advance the gospel to the ends of the earth. You have to be able to do that and you don't feel like you're ready, do you? I get it. Just like you. You don't feel ready to go play on the PGA Tour, right? I thought I was going to be the next Tiger Woods. Maybe not morally, but, you know, successfully, I wanted to be. But I didn't make it because I wasn't prepared. Now let me put some, some clubs in your bag, okay? You're allowed 14 clubs in the bag. I'm going to give you four. All right? Here's four. Jot these verses down. Go there, please, if you'd like. Uh, but at least jot them down and read them later. Romans 12, 6 says this. In his grace, in God's grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. Okay? So, so you see that? He's, he's given you a gift that you can do it well. Okay, so just equating it to golf, he's now, if this was a golf thing, he is now actually prepared and equipped Mike to go play the tour. And that's the gift. When he gives you a gift, it's that you're proficient at it. You don't have to try to work on it so much. You're good at it. When he gives you the gift of something, you're good at that. Right? Do you feel good at it? No. But we live on the truth of God's word. Amen? And God's word says when he gives you a gift, it's for doing certain things well. So, so you're good at something. You're good at something. Here's the next one, 1 Corinthians 12, 7. You there? 1 Corinthians 12, 7. I don't want to go by you. I want you to be there with me. Holy fire, burn away my desire for anything. 1 Corinthians 12, 7. A spiritual gift is given to each of us so we could help each other or to build the church, right? So notice some things there. A spiritual gift is given, uh, well, he, he's very talented. You know, Carl, he knows the Bible. He could share it with people, but what do I know? I don't have, wait a minute now. We just, we just said we're not gonna live on feelings, right? The truth of God's word says that, that God gives a gift to each one of us, right? Each one of us, and that gift is given to you and you're good at it. 
We're just basing on God's word here. Not, I'm not trying to come up with anything creative, right? This is what God's word said, that he is going to give you a gift. You're going to be good at it, and it's to be used for other people. Do you see regifting starting to happen here? We're regifting. He's given you a gift to be used for other people, to build up his church. Isn't that your purpose? Isn't that your purpose is to build up God's church? You bring him glory. When you give him glory, what happens? He's more famous. He's more loved. He's more worshipped. That means his kingdom's coming. That means he's more famous. That means his church was built. That's what he's after, right? He's after people to, to bow before him and put their face on the ground in worship, right? That's what he's after. And he's given each and every one of you a gift that you can use to accomplish that that you're good at. I'm not, I don't feel good at that. doesn't matter what you think or what you feel. Just like Dr. MacArthur said, it doesn't matter what you feel. What matters is that he has done it. And so if you've bent the knee to Jesus, you do have a gift that you're good at that's to be used to build his church. Here's another. Ephesians 4, 7. Did you guys like it when I was singing between while we were, it's a kind of, Help. Huh? I can't even hear you. I love you. Ephesians 4, 7. You ready for another one? Yes. However, he has given each one of us, see that again? Just in case you were doubting. He's reiterating, right? So it's very, very important. He has given each one of us a special gift through the generosity of Christ. And that is why the scriptures say, when he ascended to the heights, he led a crowd of captives and gave gifts to his people. Okay, a little theology. What does that all mean? That sounds great. Well, well Jesus promised his disciples this. He said that I'm going to leave you. Okay, I was with you. Now I'm going to be in you. What does that all mean? He says, when I leave, I'm going to send, I'm going to go to heaven, but I'm going to send my spirit down to be in you, to dwell in you. And at that very moment, you are set free from the power of sin. You are set free from the power of the law. You are set free from the power of death and hell in the grave. So that's why he says he, set, he, he led a bunch of captives. They, you, were, you used to be in jail. And he went to heaven. He sent down his spirit to dwell in you. And now you are free. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. Right? So you're free. You're no longer a captive. However, he also says that he gave gifts. So you get the Holy Spirit, and then that same Holy Spirit deposits a gift in you that you're good at to build up the church. Regifting. It's giving you something to share with other people. Here's the last one. 1 Peter 4, verses 10 and 11. You ready? God has given each of you, there it is again, I'm just, I'm getting tired of repeating it. Right? I mean, it's obvious now, right? I mean, it's three times. Three times in God's word, in three separate places, it's clearly stated that every single one of you gets a gift that you're good at, that's to be used to build up his church. Every single one of you. God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Re-gifting, right? Re-gifting. This is not the gospel what I'm about to share with you, but I'd like to just offer this to you for your thought and consideration. It says here that, that, um, that God has given gifts to each one of us out of his great variety. I'm about to read to you, I, I just gave you four biblical references, I'm about to read to you the lists of gifts in those sections. And I would just offer this to you that if you, I think you're all going to see yourself somewhere on that list. But if you don't see yourself clearly, I just think here it says that there's a rich variety, a great variety of spiritual gifts. I, I, I just don't know that every single gift that God gives you that you're good at to be used to build up the church is going to be listed in Scripture. I.e., where in the Bible does it say you're going to be good at playing the violin? 
Doesn't say that, does it? But she's pretty good at that, right? Yeah. Okay. So she's got a gift to be used to build up the church. And she's proficient at it. You see it in real life right now. You see it before your eyes. It's not in the Bible, but it's very, very true. She's been given a gift. So in a nutshell, each of us has the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in Ephesians 1.13 that when you, when you accepted Christ as Lord, he gave you his Holy Spirit. There's no further, later waiting for the Holy Spirit to show up that somehow there's this time period that you're saved but you don't have the Holy Spirit living in you. Garbage, okay? The Holy Spirit lives in you at the moment of conversion. And also he's given you a gift that you are proficient in to help build the church. And God gives gifts with the expectation that you will re-gift whatever he has given you for the good of the church to help other people. You see it, it's obvious, uh, back in Genesis, remember the story, you all heard of Abraham, right? So Abraham was a very successful guy. He had a very, he had a good thing going. And God goes to him and, and uproots him from his good thing and says, listen, I, I'm gonna use you for something. I need you to uproot everything that you have and I need you to go to some place and you don't even know where it is, but trust me enough and I'll tell you along the way. So he does. And he also says to Abraham, he says, listen, I'm going to bless you. Why? Why? I mean, who, who here wants God's blessing? I do. Come on now, those hands flew up so fast, right? Who wants to serve in children's ministry? Yeah, hey, all right, one or two. All right, that's great. That's awesome. Bless you. Love you. That's three. <clears throat> Everyone wants to be blessed. Why? I want, to be, I want some good stuff, man. <laughs> I'm not going to sugarcoat. I want some good stuff, Right? To, 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 to love God and enjoy him forever. I want everything he's got for me. I want it all, man. There's a song in there. It's from Queen, right? I want it all. I want it all. I want it all. And I want it now. That's me. I want his blessings now, right? <clears throat> but that's not what the Bible says. He says, I will bless you, not so that you can be wealthy and prosperous and power and position and influence. No, 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 no. Wait up. Hold, hold on, Abraham. He said, I'm going to bless you so that you can bless others, so that you can be a blessing. You see that? He blessed, there's a by, the byproduct of being blessed is your own gain. That's the byproduct. That's not the main thing. The main thing is in Scripture. I'm going to bless you so that you can be a blessing. You see? In 2 Corinthians, Paul says, uh, God will comfort you. One of the names of the Holy Spirit is the comforter. Some people, I know, I'm thinking of someone right now in our church that desperately needed the comfort of the Holy Spirit this week. Any of us ever need that? Need the comfort. We've got some trials and, and struggles and suffering and all that in our life. It's tough, right? So you need the comforter. The, the, the comforting ministry of the Holy Spirit is precious, and we need it. There's times that I've been, you know, on my face and I'm crying and snots are flying. I mean, you've been there, right? And you need his comfort. The loss of someone who's precious to you. The business crumbles. Someone you love is off in jail. Relationships end. All these things are tough and you need his comfort, right? And so God says, his word says he's going to comfort you. He's going to send his Holy Spirit to comfort you. And you're, when he's close to the brokenhearted, the Bible says. So when you're in need of that comfort, he comes to you. But that's not the main reason. That's a byproduct too. We're talking about regifting, right? He says, I will comfort you so that you can comfort others. That's the reason you are comforted. I will bless you so you can be a blessing. I will comfort you so you can be a comfort to others. And in that same book of the Bible, he says, God says, I will generously, I think it's in chapter 9, I will generously provide for all of your needs. Who needs that? I, dude, I am so living on that program right now, it's crazy. Have been for a long time. And I need him to provide. He said, if you seek first my kingdom, all the things that you need, I'll give them to you. I, I got your back. And that's, that's good to know, man. And I'm living proof of it. He is so good. But he says, I will generously provide for you. Why? So you can have a bunch of stuff? Read the verse. I will generously provide for you so that you too can be generous. That's why re-gifting. I will bless you to bless others. I will comfort you so you can comfort others. I will, I will generously provide for you so that you can generously provide for others. You see the church being built out of your re-gifting. That's what we're to do. 
That's what we're to do. So let's take a look at these lists. Let's just, I'm just going to bullet through them. Bum, 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 bum. This is what they are. Okay? So go back to Romans chapter 12. Let's look at the gifts. Listen, I, I prayed, and, I, and, and I, I, you know, I, I want to tell you that my heart is still, it's still here. I want you to see yourself in this list somewhere. You got to see yourself in the list. You're on the list, okay? You're on the list. You came here tonight to hear from God, did you not? Did you come here tonight to hear from me? Please say no. You came here tonight to hear from God. He's about to speak. Okay, here, here, here it is. Romans 12, 6. In his grace, what's that? A gift. You didn't earn it, deserve it. You're not entitled to it. He is nice. He is love. It's a gift. And in this grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. We heard that, right? So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, what's that? Well, he tells us to speak out. Speak out. Tell people about him. If he's given you the ability to, to, to prophesy, and, and don't be so scared by that word. Well, I'm not a prophet. I'm not like, a, you know, Elijah or something. No, it doesn't matter. Can you speak out? You can speak out. You can tell, Paul said, I believe, therefore I speak. If, you can, if you've been given the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving, serve them well. Can you serve? Can you serve? Can you do something to, to build up the body of Christ? You're, the only responsibility you have is the responsibility God's put before you. Here you are. He's placed you in this church. And as each one of us does their own special work, it helps the others to grow. And the whole church is healthy, growing, and full of love. Can you serve? We can all serve in some way, right? Do it, do it well. If you are a teacher, teach well. Is there anyone here who doesn't know anything about anything? Okay, all of us know something about something. Teach them. Teach them. You don't have to pull out the Bible and start teaching. That's, that doesn't mean you have to pull out the Bible and start teaching. It tells us in the Bible to the older ladies to teach the younger ladies how to live. Teach them how to be a good wife. It doesn't necessarily have to be the Bible. Teach them how to be a good wife. Older men, teach the younger men. It doesn't have to be the Bible. Just teach them. Give them some, teach them responsibility. Teach them character. Teach them integrity. Teach them something. You have the ability to teach, teach. Do something. Don't hoard it. Uh, <clears throat> if your gift is, is to encourage others, uh, be encouraging. Let's, let's try something. Uh, look, at, look at the person next to you and just say, it's going to be all right. Look, so you all have the gift of encouragement. It's amazing. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. If it is giving, give generously. How do you be a generous giver? I mean, we could be super holy and say, well, the, the, old, the lady in the Bible, she only had two pennies and she gave that. That's awesome. How do you, how do you know if you have the, been given the gift to, to, to give generously? I don't know. Do you have any money? I mean, we don't have to be super holy about this, right? You got any money in the bank? He gave you gifts. Why? I'm going to bless you. Your lot in life is a gift from me. I'm giving you something so that you could give it to someone else. I'm going to bless you to be a blessing. I'm going to generously provide for you so you can generously provide for someone else. That, so you've, if you've got anything to give, give generously. Don't have to be too super spiritual here. I mean, let's, we're, we're a pretty cut and dry, kind of plain and simple, nuts and bolts church. That's what it is, right? If God has given you leadership ability, uh, take the responsibility seriously. I got to tell you right now, um, I take this really seriously. And I've had some pushback from people because I'm like intense a lot of times, but you know what? I love you, but I don't care. I'm, I, I'm taking it seriously. I, I, I'm taking it seriously. If he's blessed me with the, with the opportunity to be, able to, to be in this role, in this capacity, I take it wicked seriously, right? And there's others in our church that, have been, that are in positions of leadership, and I'm just going to say this with all sincerity and honesty and love. If you're in any position of authority in this church or that you will be at some point, if you want to be a part of this leadership team, heed God's word, take that responsibility seriously. It's a big deal. We're talking about eternity, people's lives forever. Okay? And if you have a gift of showing kindness to others, uh, do it gladly. Now, that's not showy, right? That's not a showy gift. A lot of the gifts get a lot of attention, you know. 
the one who can lay his hands and say, uh, you know, you're healed in the name of Jesus, and the person jumps up out of the wheelchair. That's like, woo! Great. I'll tell you right now, in this day and age, someone who's kind, woo! It's not showy, but it's awesome. It'd just be nice to one another, right? You all said that God was nice. We're supposed to be like him. Boom. Okay, so, uh, so there's Romans 12, 6. You don't have to, to raise your hand, but maybe you saw yourself on that list. And if so, he's given you that gift, uh, and you're good at it. So start doing it. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. These are the more um, famous gifts, at least the ones that are argued about and controversial in the church, and they shouldn't be, because they're no different and no better or any worse than the gift of kindness or giving generously or serving. You know, the person who can speak in tongues is not any more awesome than the person who comes in every week and cleans the toilet. Okay? Um, or vice versa. A uh, spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other uh, to profit all for the common good. It's not just for you. It's to be regifted. To one person, the Spirit gives the ability to give wise advice, a little word of wisdom. To another, the same Spirit gives a, special, a message of special knowledge, a word of uh, knowledge. Uh, these, are, these are things that God has taught you, special things that you could share with people on His behalf. And sometimes we get that, right? Sometimes you get that. And, and so we're supposed to use them. Uh, speak up. The same Spirit gives great faith to another. My wife is, is that person. She, she just has tremendous faith in God. When I'm weak, she is so strong. When, when, I'm, when I'm freaking out about stuff, she's amazing. Uh, she trusts Him. Uh, and to someone else, the Spirit gives the gift of healing. Well, that's incredible. Uh, he gives one person the power to perform miracles. I, I got to tell you, I'm kind of confused about that because to me, I put my hands to someone and say, in Jesus' name, you're healed. Get up and walk. That's miraculous. So I don't even know what he's talking about when it comes to those who have the gift of healing and then those who have the gift of miracles. Like, I don't understand that. I'm just going to be transparent with you. You can look it up and, and we can talk about it someday, but that doesn't really matter. The, the fact of the matter is that he's given some people this amazing supernatural ability to do things that are contrary to the natural world. That's, in, that's insane. But he does do that. Um, and another, the ability to prophesy. We already found out what that was. What's that mean? Speak out, right? Speak out. Uh, he gives someone else the ability to discern uh, whether a message is from the Spirit of God or from another spirit. So uh, discerning the spirits. Like, so as I'm sitting up here and I'm, I'm preaching to you, I, some people can really tune in and go, you know what, that is a message from God. And, and some people would say, well, that's not a message from God. Some people have that amazing gift. You know, there's people that come up to you. If, you, if you're sticking church long enough, you're going to have people that come up to you and go, uh, that you don't really know real well, but you kind of know them, and they're going to say, uh, I got a word from God for you. Okay, that's, that's great. There's a lot of people that have a word from God for you. But you need to be discerning, because just because it sounds like the Bible, it doesn't mean it always is, right? The Bible does say that the, that the devil comes disguised as an angel of light. You've got to be discerning. You've got to be discerning. Okay? And some of us have a special gift to be able to do that. So maybe before you embrace that thing that someone tells you, go find someone who has this gift and say, hey, brother or sister, this is what I heard from someone. What do you think? You know, pray through that thing. Search the scriptures to see if it lines up with God's word. But someone, some people do have that gift. Um, so, and then from another, uh, and from another, I'm sorry, Still, another person is given the ability to speak in unknown languages. That's tongues, okay? While another is given the ability to interpret what is being said. Uh, tongues are spoken, right? Tongues evangelize the world. I, I mean, not only does it edify you, but it also can speak to someone in a language that you don't know how to speak. So again, it's just speaking out to these people so they can hear the good news of God. These are languages that you don't understand. You never learned in school. So there's this idea of this angelic kind of a language. You guys know what I'm talking about. And some people think it's mumbo-jumbo. I'm telling you that it's not. That's my position. 
And, and I'm telling you, there's also the other tongue that is, uh, you know, when you don't know Spanish, but there's a bunch of Spanish people over here, and I walk in, and I start speaking Spanish so that I can tell them the gospel. That's awesome. So some people get that gift, and some people have the gift of understanding what all that means, and, and that's not me. Uh, but let me just give you this uh, little side note. It is the one and only Spirit who distributes all these gifts. He alone decides which gift each person should have. And I tell you this because I, I don't want you to be fooled ever because the, you know, the Bible tells, tells me to care for the flock that God's entrusted to me. And so I, I do care for you. I want to tell you this. Okay? Don't go to a school of prophecy. Don't, don't, don't have someone tell you, hey, do you want to speak in tongues? Just start doing this. Loosen your lips. Start talking like this, right? No, 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 no. It's, 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 you, it doesn't matter what you try to conjure up. It is the one and only Spirit. The Holy Spirit of God decides which gift you get. It's up to Him. So you can desire the ability to speak in tongues. You can desire the ability to, to perform miracles and healing and all these different things. You should pursue those things like desire them, Lord. Whatever you want from me, I'm open to receive it. But don't conjure anything up. It's, 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 the, it's the Lord's work. And the Lord's work alone. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7. I'm just repeating the verse that I read to you earlier as you're turning there. However, it is, God has given each one of us a special gift through the generosity of Christ. When he ascended to the heights, he led a crowd of captives and gave gifts to his people. That's awesome. Now, in verse 11, he goes on, he starts talking about some more gifts that he's given to us. And these are corporate gifts. These are collective gifts. These are not, before it was like, these are the gifts you get individually. I decide that you get this gift, and you can do this well, and you can do this well, and you can do this well, and so on and so forth, and use those for the kingdom. Build up the church. Awesome. But then there's, there's these here. These are, these are collective gifts. These are to the church. It says that Christ gave these gifts to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers. Now, those are a gift to you. And again, just like last week, I'm just saying it's very uncomfortable for me to say that because I don't feel very good about myself. I don't think very highly of myself, but what I think and feel doesn't matter, okay? It doesn't matter, okay? But these people have been gifted to the church, but why were they gifted to the church? They were gifted to the church to equip you to do the work of the ministry and to build up the church. Do you see regifting happening again here? So, so when he gave me the, the job and the ability to do what I do, it's not so I could sit around and go, man, I'm just learning so much about you, Lord. This is awesome. Just me and you are doing our thing together. This is incredible, man. I'm just going to preach to the lights and the wall. No, I'm supposed to take whatever information and knowledge and wisdom that he has imparted to me and pass it on to you. I'm supposed to speak out. Every single one of these church leaders, the, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers, they've got to speak out. They've got to take whatever God gives them and pass it on to the people to build up the church. That's what it says. They're a gift from God to build up the church. We've got to speak out. Every single one of us. <coughs> and here's the last one, 1 Peter chapter 4. Verse 10. Are you there? Going once? Twice? Okay. God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Can we just pause there for a second? Can we just pause on the words use them. I just want to make a passionate plea. In order to worship God in spirit and in truth, in order to, to, to be effective in building the kingdom, in order for you to live the life that Christ died to give you, use them. It, they can't be separated. Do you understand? There's no way to live the life that God has planned for you, this for him thing. You can't live for him unless you use them. Do you understand this? 
Shake your head, please. Say, yes, I understand this. You, you have to understand this. You have to use the gift that God has given you to live to your maximum potential. To, to accomplish the purpose that Christ went to the cross for, you have to use the gift that he's given you that you're proficient in to build up the church. God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Do you see the regifting going on here? It's not to serve your own purposes, or your, old, your own fame and fortune. It's to serve one another. And then he gives you a couple. Do you have the gift of speaking? There it is again. Then speak as though God himself were speaking through you. Now, I don't like that translation. You know what most translations say? <clears throat> Remember I told you to find yourself in the list? Remember? Have you found yourself in the list yet? You can be honest. If you haven't really found yourself in the list yet, raise your hand. You can be honest. No? One. Okay, most translations say if a man speak, speak the oracles of God. Can you speak? Then you're gifted. If a man speak, let him speak the oracles of God. In other words, what should be coming out of your mouth is God's word. That's what should be coming out. Can you speak? Most of us in this world can speak. Some people cannot speak. So if you can speak, you are a gifted man. You're a gifted woman. And if you speak, speak the oracles of God. You're gifted. You're gifted. And here's, another, here's the last one. Do you have the gift of helping others? Say, yes, I do. Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. I want to be tender and, and loving when I say that we need, to be, we need some soldiers up in here, man. I don't know that the I don't know that, that God's army is filled with a bunch of crybabies. We need some tough, tough guys. We need some tough ladies. Who are, who are serving him with all the strength and energy that God gave me. I'm in! You know what I mean? I'm in. I'm tired. But I'm in. I know somebody in this church that works a bazillion hours. But I still got a text yesterday saying, tell me where and I'm going to build the youth room in this church with my hands. Praise God. That's what I'm talking about. You think that person's tired? Yeah, they work a lot. I know this. Serve him. Serve others with everything you got. I'm tired. So am I, dude. Who's not? I've been chasing around six kids for a hundred years, man. <laughs> Give me a break. <clears throat> and what happens when you do that? He's repurposed you and he's in the church building business, right? Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. Then everything you do will bring glory to God. Isn't that what I just told you at the beginning of this message? What are you for? For him. That's it. That's the reason you live. You live to bring glory to God. You live so that Jesus Christ is world famous. Do You know, right now, right now, there's two-thirds of the earth that do not believe that. Two-thirds of the earth. That's five billion people. We have so much work to do. We got to get out there with all the strength that he's given you. Don't throw him your scraps anymore, people. That's not the kind of church this is supposed to be. Don't throw him your scraps. Dig in your heels and work hard for the Lord. If you have the ability to do anything, do it. You're somewhere on these four lists, right? But here, here's the problem. 
And the problem is displayed in the symptoms that I shared with you last week that 10% of the church does 100% of the work. And, and in our country, the last 20 years, it's on average 4,000 churches are closing every single year. And the problem is, is that I accept the gift of new life. woo And then I ignore it. And I don't do anything with it. But someday... When they do my funeral and the preacher lies about me, tells everyone how great I was, I'm going to glory. You can decide if that's the truth or not. I'll leave that up to your personal study. But that's the problem. People are excited and they accept it, but they ignore the gift. God's plan is to reach the the human race and to grow his church is to deposit a gift in you that you will use well to reach others in some way with the gospel of Jesus Christ. I want everyone to look at me for a minute. And then we're done. God's plan to reach a dying world, okay, is you. There's no other plan. His plan to reach the lost. His singular provision to make his plea to the men is you. It's you. Don't ignore the gift. In 1 Timothy, I'm going to call the band back up, please. 1 Timothy 4.14, Paul tells his young protege who he was, he personally was equipping to do the work of the ministry, right? He says in that verse, he says to Timothy, do not neglect the spiritual gift that you received. So he's telling him that. Listen, loved ones. That's a prescriptive text. That's for you. We've, we've heard that all night tonight. Don't neglect the gift. Don't ignore the gift. Do it. <clears throat> he says, don't neglect, don't neglect the spiritual gift. Don't ignore the gift that you've received. He says, I want you to do something else with this gift I gave you. In 2 Timothy 1.6, he says, fan the flames of the spiritual gift that God gave you. Do you guys know, can you bring that picture up? Do you guys know what this thing is? Do you know what that is? That's a fireplace bellow. If you're not familiar with it, what it is is you would, you would take this thing, and they're usually about this big, and, and you, they have handles, and they have this diaphragm lung thing in the middle of it, and you put it underneath a dying flame. And you start to pump it, and you stick the little nose of it down into underneath the fire, and you start to blow air into there to fan the flames so that they grow, right? And that's what he's talking about here. That's what he wants. But I don't believe that's what he wants for us, you see? I don't think that's what he wants for us. What does he want? This is what he wants. He wants to fan the flame of your faith. Okay? A little air, he's going to do it. He doesn't want a pilot light. He wants an inferno for this church. He wants you fired up for him. Okay? Fan the flames of your gift. This is what I want for you. To get excited about the Lord. Amen? Amen. Come on now. Are you with me? Stand up. Worship the Lord. Get fired up. Get fired up. Let our church be on fire. Let the Holy Spirit fire fall and go out these doors and go tell people serve the Lord with every bit of energy you have. Go get them guys. Go fill this place with lost and hurting people. Bring them to the Lord. Serve him well.